Do you know who I am? No. Never heard of me. In former times, everyone knew me. Merlin, the greatest magician of the Middle Ages. And they all came to me. Peasants, knights, kings, they all wanted me to help them. And usually I did. Unless I was planning some other great thing. And the greater matter was certainly King Arthur. It happened in England more than a thousand years ago. The Empire needed a new ruler because the old king had just deceased. And because in my dreams the future is prophesied, I knew when young Arthur would become king. Also, the Holy Grail would be found again. You will get to know later what the Holy Grail is. I am sure that Arthur became King of England and showed the Castle of Camelot as the King's seat. Most of the dukes and knights agreed that Arthur should be the new king because they knew he was under my personal protection and they had a great respect for me. But there was only one man who did not agree with him. His name was Mordred, the Black Knight. Come on, Merlin. Arthur, you know I think that you want to fight against one of the best and strongest knights of England. Well, I've decided to fight against him, and what a king decides upon, he shall keep. And most of all, he has to hold himself back when things become dangerous. Well, what do you have to do? You will see very soon whether this is good for you or not. We are entering the territory of the Black Knight. Aren't you afraid of him? But it would be unlike a king if he forgot his royal duties out of fear. It is my duty now to defeat Mordred. Right. I have warned you. Arthur personally, king by Merlin's mercy. <laughs> Stop offending me. Draw your sword, or are you a coward? <laughs> coward? Do you believe that I have not enough courage to fight against such a little upstart? Perhaps you give me your sword immediately, then we can save a lot of time and I won't injure you, yeah. Big mouth. Oh, then we'll do it as you like. a day, through and through, back and forth, to and fro. At a certain point it seemed that Mordred was the stronger one, and Arthur seemed to win. By and by the attacks became weaker and weaker. Their arms were much damaged and they injured each other more and more, but neither of the two wanted to give up. Then the moment came when Arthur had to learn that also a king can be in trouble earlier. Stop, Mordred. Merlin, that's what I thought before. Without you, Arthur can't do anything. Merlin, keep out of this. It's only something between Mordred and me. He's right. There's an end now to playing the king. Have it any other way. <gasps> mm. 
Malin, what have you done? If anybody hears that it was not me who defeated the Black Knight, that you killed him with your magic, everybody will laugh at me. Mm, my dear Arthur, first of all, Mordred is not dead but only unconscious. And secondly, if a certain Merlin did not exist, then nobody could laugh at you because you would be stone dead and England would be without a king again. If Arthur hadn't been so injured, he might have even fought against me because he was so insulted. But when he stood up, he fell down again because of his pain. So I packed him on his horse and took him to a hermit who had experience in treating wounded knights. And there he lay for days between life and and death. At last, the, herb, the, the old man had their effect, and slowly Arthur became healthy again. One day, he saw a young lady walking along with her retinue. Who is that? Merlin, please tell me who that young woman was. Her name is Guinevere. She is Prince Leo's daughter. She is the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. You know, that one can quarrel about good taste. I'll marry her as soon as I have defeated Mordred, but this time without your help. Also without a sword. As far as I remember, your sword was damaged in the fighting. Oh, that's right. But where should I find a new sword in this wilderness? I see. Now I'm suddenly the right man again. Well, come along with me and I'll find a new sword for you. Where are we here? must be a fairy. You are right, Arthur. I'm Morgana from Avalon, the country of the fairies of immortality. Why do you come to me? My sword is broken, and a king without a sword is a bit strange. I would like to ask you for a new sword. I have known you would come one day. Do you see the sword in the lake? It's a name, Excalibur. Go and fetch it. Oh. Come on, Arthur. What are you waiting for? Arthur was mad about the new sword. Like a king. I had almost forgotten that he was a king himself. Well, it was the most glorious sword that he had ever seen. But it was not just a beautiful sword. No. No, Excalibur was a very special sword. But Arthur did not know that until now. After Arthur had admired the sword again and again, he gave his horse the spurs. He could not wait until he would challenge the Black Knight again. And everything happened, just like the first time. Arthur knocked at the gate of the castle. Mordred turned up and the two started to fight again. But this time, Mordred could not rely on his experience and all his strength. Because against someone who owns the sword of Avalon, even the strongest man is powerless. Mercy, King Arthur, spare my life. I will spare your life, only if you promise not to fight against me again and to accept me as the rightful King of England. I promise. I invite you to my castle. Don't trust him. He has submitted to you too easily. Forget that. Now he knows I'm the stronger one. Do you really believe that? Don't you notice that you haven't a single scratch? Why should I? I'm the better and braver of us both. Nonsense, Arthur. It's the sword. Whoever owns Excalibur and fights with it is invincible. The young king was rather angry at first. 
It was totally against his idea of chivalry to fight against someone using a magic sword. But after a while, I realized that it was not the worst thing to have a sword that made him invincible. Also, the Black Knight suspected that it was not a normal sword with which he had been defeated. He wanted to have it at, by all means, so he offered Arthur to come with him to become a knight in Camelot. And because Arthur was young and inexperienced, he trusted his friendliness and took him as his knight. We had stayed in Camelot just for a few days when Arthur remembered the lady he had seen, Guinevere. So he sent me to ask her father for permission to marry her. That was the custom at the time. Guinevere didn't cause any problems. She was looking forward to becoming queen. I only had to come to an agreement with her father about the dowry. When this was finished, we could celebrate the marriage. After the wedding, I led Arthur into the hall of the castle. I had a special present. Come here, Arthur. I want to show you something. That's new. My wedding present. Hmm, that's quite nice, but round. We have never had a round table before. Where should I sit as a king if there is no top seat? But that is the reason why the table is round. All who sit around it should have the same rights. If you believe a knight deserves his merit, then ask him to be seated. Hmm, but at the moment, I don't know so many of them. Don't be in too much of a rush. Select them carefully, and when the time is ripe, when then they begin their search for the Holy Grail. Looking for the wonderful grail? I don't know anything about it. That is the Holy Grail, which, if one believes in it, will feed the hungry and heal the ill. Eh? Yes, it is a wonder. Well, Merlin, the idea of the round table is not bad. Hmm. Knights of the round table. It doesn't sound bad. Arthur signed the seat of the round table to his best friend, also to the Black Knight. He refused to listen to my warnings. I accepted what he wanted, but I had to insist on one thing. Three seats had to remain free. For I knew in the course of time, another three knights would turn up who would make King Arthur's round table famous in all eternity. Morgana. Listen to me, Arthur. I have helped you for some time now. Today I would like to ask you something. Take Lancelot into your round table. I have educated him in Avalon, and I promise you he will honor you greatly. I would like to fulfill any wish of yours. When Lancelot has proven that he is courageous and brave, he shall become a knight of the round table. Here's someone who wants to test his courage. I want to prove, I want to prove that I am a true knight of the round table. <laughs> you dirty bit, you want to fight against me? Don't do it, Lancelot. He is too strong. I'm satisfied if you defeat a less dangerous enemy. The king wants to make a coward of the knight of the round table? I'm not a coward. I'll teach you a lesson. Come on, come on, big boy. Don't you carry a sword? We should have a little game. A game? I want to fight. Just wait. You take an axe and hit me in the neck as hard as you can. Then I'll hit you back. <laughs> It's your turn now, Lancelot. Come on, hit me. I don't want you to show any compassion. I only wanted to test you, to see how brave you are, yeah. <laughs> Lancelot, I think you are brave enough. 
in the following years, Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table became more and more famous. Arthur was a brave and just ruler. He always helped his friends, and because of his sword Excalibur, he remained it unwounded. But this was a great blessing, because until then, every year I had the trouble of finding a new king. However, there was somebody, you can hardly believe it, there was really somebody who had never heard of King Arthur and his knights. No. In the forest of Nottingham, there where it was very dense, lived a princess with her son. A short time after the birth of her child, her husband had lost his life in a duel. And because she was afraid that the same might happen to her son, she withdrew into the forest and lived alone with him. When Percival was 18 years old, he did not know yet that there were castles and knights out there. One day, he saw Lancelot riding through the forest in search of adventure. Oh. Why are you staring at me like that? You are shining so much. Are you an angel? I'm not an angel, definitely not. I'm a knight. A knight? Tell me, what is a knight? A knight? Well, a knight is somebody who is looking for adventures and who serves his king. And what is that? That's a shield. And that? That's a sword, my dear boy. And I also want to be a knight. <laughs> if you want to be a knight, you silly boy, then go to Camelot. King Arthur will not hesitate a second to knight you. Oh. Lancelot was giggling into his armor and carried on riding. And Percival ran as quickly as he could, and that was rather fast, to his mother and told her what had happened to him. She could not stop him from wanting to go to Camelot and to become a knight there. Well, his mother gave him an old rickety horse and made him a shield sewn from some cloth and tied together around some willow twigs. Oh dear, I tell you, Percival looked worse than the poorest beggar. And that is exactly what the mother wanted. She wanted him to be laughed at, and as quickly as possible to come back to her in the forest. And that was exactly what was done by people who saw him. Everybody laughed at him, but Percival thought they were friendly and laughed back. At last he came to Camelot. that coming there you should better ask what is coming there oh look how i drive him away come on come on i have a dry throat because of my laughing hurry up modric go get me something to drink modric bring me this modric bring me that it goes on like that the whole day i'm not your servant but i'm your queen and you have to do as i tell you what a queen! Arthur came to power with the help of Merlin's tricks, and he also got Excalibur from Merlin. Without his sword, he would be the greatest coward of all time. You dare talk about King Arthur like that. Where is a knight who will take a revenge for this offense? Here, here! I'm a knight! I want to avenge King Arthur! You? You are just good enough for a court jester. Be gone. <laughs> see, see, my pretty Guinevere? Only court jesters are ready to fight for Arthur. I'm not a clown! Start fighting now! If you want to lose your life, by all means, I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> what is going on here? He 
was offending you, my lord, so I was fighting him. And you have won, I see. Only the way in which you did it was not in the manner of a knight. No, but I have only come here because I want to be a knight. So, you have a few things to learn. What is your name? Percival. I like him. He's brave and strong, and it was my fault that Percival came here. Well, if you want, I'll tell you all that you need to know in order to become a knight. I agree. Everything had been planned like this by me. Because without Percival, the story would not have ended as I had seen it in my dream. Percival accompanied Lancelot, and already after a year he was better than his teacher. Now the time had come to start the search for the Holy Grail. A long time ago, even I didn't live on this earth at that time. The gods were infuriated by the people, and the grail disappeared out of this world. In my dream, I had seen that the knights of the round table would get back the grail. I prepared everything and went to Arthur. Come here, Arthur. I want to show you something. What is that? <laughs> Stop, Arthur. You may pull as much as you want. You will never do it. And why not? Because only somebody who has a good conscience can pull out the sword. Whoever is able to do that will find the Holy Grail. Do you want to try it? Well, a good conscience. What do you mean by that? That one has never lied in one's life? That's exactly what I mean. If I think about it, I must say I don't need a new sword. I have the best sword in England after all. What's about Percival? Not even white lies? No, not even white lies. No, then I better not try it. Lancelot? I don't really know. Maybe not. Nobody? Do you really want to say that there is none among you who has never lied? What about Mordred? Well, I'll show you. I'm the most honest of your knights. I'll try it. <laughs> Come here, Galahad. Galahad? Yes, this young man will find the wonderful bowl. You must prove it first. Come on, Galhad, pull the sword. Oh. Everything is ready. You have to go now and find the Holy Grail. But you have told us only Galahad can find the wonderful bowl. Yes, but he needs your support. Only Arthur must stay here so that England is not without a king. This is the chance I've been waiting for. When all the knights of Camelot have disappeared, I will succeed in getting the sword Excalibur in my position. A few days later, the knights set out. Everybody in a different direction. And everybody had a lot of adventures. Galahad as well. He killed two dragons, five giants, and freed twelve innocent children. And wherever he turned up, he was admired by everyone. The Black Knights had managed to be injured after a few days fighting. Only lightly, of course. So he had a pretense to come back to King Arthur. But don't be afraid. I had warned Arthur, of course, and meanwhile he had learned to listen to me. After many months, Galahad came to the coast. When at a bay, he got off his horse in order to have a rest. He was surprised to see Lancelot and Percival there. Both were totally exhausted, and what was even worse for them, without horses. They had lost them on their last adventure. Galahad, we've almost come to the end of our search. You two will find the Grail together with me. Well, in our condition, we can't be of great help to you. We've lost our horses and we can't get on anymore.
Oh. Galahad is right. You are the Knights of the Holy Grail. One will find it, one will watch it, and one will report it. Go on to this ship. With how oh, to yes. oh, yes. men, without a crew, the ship sailed off with the three knights. And every day the table was set with the most delicious food. Lancelot and Percifer were much too tired to be amazed at that. And Galahad, well, Galahad had always believed in miracles. After many days and nights, they at last landed on a foreign coast. When the three came on land, Lancelot and Percival wanted to return at once. Everything was so unknown. They were here without their horses. By the ten full armor. If you have ever tried to run a long way in armor, you will know how difficult that is. But Galahad went in front of them like in a dream and showed them the way. Soon they came to a cave, and although Percival and Lancelot were the bravest knights of their time, they now hesitated to follow Galahad. He had suddenly, without looking around once, disappeared into the cave. Lancelot, Percival, don't be afraid. That sounds quite simple. My task is done. I shall go to Avalon. Galahad has found the wonderful bowl. You, Parzival, will be the Grail King from now on, as long as you are watching the bowl. Those who believe in it will not be starving, and when they are ill, they will be healed. You, Lancelot, have to go back and tell the world that the Holy Grail has been found. So oh, yeah, the difficult it was for Percival and Lancelot. They had to say goodbye to each other. Percival remained here as the guard of the Grail, and Lancelot went on to the boat. On his way back, he later met the other knights of the Round Table together, and happy that their search was finished now, they sailed towards Camelot. At Camelot, hardly anyone believed that the Knights of the Table Round would ever find the Grail, and nobody believed that they would ever come back alive. Arthur felt lonelier from day to day, and Mordred was sneaking around him with wicked thoughts and was waiting for a chance to steal the sword Excalibur. But because I had warned Arthur, the Black Knight was waiting for his chance in vain. Arthur, the Knights of the Round Table are coming back. I can't believe that. To hell with them! Tell me, I want to know everything. Where are Percival and Galahad? And while the knights were talking and talking, I had taken the sword Excalibur with me. My dream wanted it to be that way. I had to bring the sword back to where Arthur had received it once. I had written Arthur a letter in which everything was explained. I gave the letter to a butler, put the sword under my coat, and went to the lake. So my task was done now. I withdrew from the life on this earth, but to honor the truth, the task was done. And that was not the only reason. E
even a magician can fall in love. And I had fallen in love with Morgana, and I wanted to be together with her and live in a different